Welcome to the video on the CSS float property, which allows you to create multi-column layouts or push things side by side. This lesson is going to go ahead and cover how to use that CSS float property and apply it to anything, as well as creating that multi-column layout. The CSS float property is used to position and format content and put things side by side specifically. You can have multiple columns, two, three, four, five, six, seven, however many you want, and float things left to right. It's really important to note that there's no center option. So you can float things to the left or to the right or have no float at all. And what's interesting is if you want something like a three column layout, the question is how do you float something to the left and right and then have something sit in the center? Well, you can actually float things left to right and have multiple things float one direction, like two columns floating to the left and one column floating to the right and still achieve a three column layout. It's important to note that every time your internet browser is reading your page, it's reading the code top to bottom, left to right. And depending on how it reads it, it can push things to the left and the right and let things sit side by side. So even if you had two sitting to the left and one sitting to the right, depending on which order they were written in, they could essentially achieve a three column layout. In this instance, we're just going to do a two column layout to keep it simple and teach you how the flow property works. So you can see in this image here, you've got section and article floating on the left side because they're on the left side of the screen and a side floating to the right. Our goal is to get our page to have the nav on the left and the article on the right. The flow property has four values. It can have a float of left to move things to the left side of the screen, a float of right to move things to the right side of the screen, None, which is actually the default float property of all elements. And so when you're working with anything, it's defaulted to have no floating. And inherit, which means that if I have a nav inside of a header and the header is floating to the left, the nav, since it's inside of its parent tag of the header, will automatically float to the left if it had an inherent float. So essentially, whatever's inside of something else, inside of its parent tag, it'll float whichever direction it goes. And that's what inherit means. So this is what no floating looks like. If you had an image of a pineapple and you had a float of none, which is actually its default setting, even if you didn't have it written out in the CSS, you can see that the text isn't allowed to wrap around it. And by default, it sits on the left side of the screen because it would show before the other text. So this is where in the HTML, you have the image tag first, and then you have the text. If you have the image tag after the text, the image would be appearing down after the paragraph. With no float, you can see the text isn't allowed to wrap around it. It can only go across the screen and once it hits the edge of the screen to wrap, it actually has to pop down to the bottom of the picture because the text can't float around it. If you had float to the right, the image would be pushed to the right side of the screen and the text could all float up next to it. So what's important to note about the float property is it doesn't just affect the object that you're actually floating like this image here, it affects everything else around it. It allows things to float to the left and right of it, but also on top of it, the, below it and behind it. So it's important to note that things can be floated behind on top of everything. This is what floating to the left would look like when your image is on the left side and your text can then float and wrap around it. At this point, this is what our document looks like. And our HTML file has it to where our nav is sitting first because it's listed first and then our article is next, but they aren't sitting side by side. We'd like our article up here. So we want our nav to sit to the left and then we want our article to sit to the right. So we're gonna use the float property to do that. So let's go ahead and float some elements inside CSS. It's really simple. Essentially, you want the nav to float to the left and the article to float to the right. So you're gonna go to the nav, but you're not gonna do it in the HTML. You're gonna go to the CSS because it's a property to change the style and look of the page. So in here, I'm gonna go ahead and float this to the left. The second I float it to the left, you can see that article pops up. But this isn't the full article. The article actually exists more than where we can see because it's 70% width of the page. And at this point, it's actually sitting behind here, the boxes at least. The text gets pushed out so that the user can see the text and it'll do that by default all the time because they want the user to be able to see their text that's written. So there's actually more article back here. 
to get the article to fill the page across to the right, we're going to have to go ahead and float it to the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose float and write. Now the second that you do that, you'll see that it does float to the right down below, but it's got some issues. And the reason we have issues is because of our width. It may seem like our width is 30% and then 70%, which essentially would equal 100 and should fit in this page. But in fact, we've added something called padding. Padding again creates space on the left, top, bottom, and right of a semantic element or a block element, which essentially adds to the width, which means that the width of this is not 70%. It's actually 70% plus 2% on the left and 2% on the right, meaning it's 74% width of the page. Same thing with our, art, or our nav. This one is actually 34% width of the page. I wanted to show this because padding pushes text away from the edge of the box, and we're gonna cover it more when we talk about the CSS block model, box model, but I wanna show how sometimes it may seem like your widths are correct, but you need to think about the whole picture about what's going on. So we're gonna go ahead and remove our padding at this point. I think what's also important to note is that the footer has popped up. So I'm gonna remove the padding from my nav and the padding from my article. When I remove the padding, even though the footer had popped up, I don't see it anymore. And my question is to you, why don't I see it anymore? So at this point, our footer is missing. And what happened to it? Well, when you're floating things, remember that not only do things float to the left and the right, but things around it, other elements, other text, other images are allowed to float behind it, to the side and above it. So our footer is actually behind our article. If I were to go into our code pen here and I were to change our article to be 50% width, you'll see that the footer appears. It's back behind it. And you can see that it's even sitting right up where the end of the header is. So what I need to do is I need to push the footer down. To push the footer down, I'm gonna go ahead and set my article back to its width of 70% to span the whole page. And to push it down, I'm going to need to contain some stuff. I don't want the footer to be able to float up behind the nav and the article. I want the nav and the article to be in their own box with nothing around them. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and create another box. This box is gonna be invisible and it's gonna be a section. You could use a main tag or a div tag, whatever you wanted to use, but we're gonna use section because it is in fact a full section of the page. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a box around our article and our nav. So when you're looking at this page right here, what we want to happen is we want our page to be able to contain these two boxes together and make it so that the footer has to come down here because these boxes, nothing will be allowed to go inside of this. To do this, we have to contain those two objects inside of the section. So the section is going to start up here and then it's going to end down here before the footer. So that way we can get this footer back. To do that, we're gonna go ahead and create that section. First things first, we gotta define it in our HTML. So going to our HTML, I need to figure out where's my section gonna start and where's my section gonna end. If I wanna contain the nav and I wanna contain the article inside of it, I'm going to take my entire nav and article together and I'm going to want to indent those so I can put the section around them. So I'm going to select them with my cursor and then just hit tab on my keyboard once. And you'll see that it'll indent all that by one tab space. I'm then going to go underneath my header and click enter and create that section opening tag. I want the section to open before the nav, but then I want it to close after the article to contain the article in the nav. So I'm going to hit enter after article, hit backspace and close the section here. You can check to see if you did it right by going up here to the first section tag and choosing the collapse option to the left of it. And you will see that everything should collapse inside of it, including the nav and the article. If you've got that right, you're ready to go, but that didn't solve our problem. 
our footer isn't back. So what we need to do is we need to tell the computer how big is this section? How tall? Because if I want the footer to be pushed down, I need to inter introduce the height of how big this section is so that it can't float within that height. My question to you is, how big should the section height be? Well, this nav and this article both have a height of 300 pixels. So I'm gonna make my section a height of 300 pixels. So going down here, I'm gonna call upon the section and stylize it with a height of 300 pixels. Once you stylize that with a height of 300 pixels, your footer should pop back up. Because now it's not allowed to float up behind it, it's been told how far down to come. So that way it can't be floating in the area of the nav in the article. So that's how you can create a section and define a float property and control everything around it.